Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to talk about simple games. So this topic came up in the Audio Dungeon Discord that I'm part of. Um, the idea that um, there's these really basic games out there, you, you've probably seen them maybe, um, that are designed, I guess, to be either like the whole game's on one page, or they're just stripped down versions often of D&D &D a lot of times. Um, and kind of the question came up was, not necessarily in a negative way, but like, how many of these do we need? You know, they're all kind of similar, or are they, right? And what's kind of fun, in a way, is that these games, if we look at them for the most part, especially the ones that are D&D based, they're really like a set of house rules or rules maybe that they've picked up from videos like this or whatever, uh, from different people, and they've put together into a game set. Uh, maybe th looking for the best of the best. And I think that's really cool. Um, the question of how many do we need, I mean, I don't know, I guess it's up to you, right? Um, I feel like after a while, I started to fall into the category of I'd much rather see somebody flesh out something that is a um, a world. Not necessarily all the details of a world, but like the reason why this version of D&D &D is not every other version of D&D. &D. Not because you're using slot encumbrance or you're using roll under stats or you're using the, the deed die. Um, you know, why is it that this is different and it's not just another set of adventurers going into dungeons? Because really, if that's all you're doing, do we need that, I wonder? And that made me think about the common argument towards this is like, well, you know, you get from friends, they only play once in a while, once a month or whatever. And, you know, they get together and we don't want to play a complicated game, but they don't want to take the time to learn. And, and I think, <laughs> think to myself, I mean, even on the even going to the fifth edition, which I'm not going to talk about here, but... If you look at a, a, if you want to stay more OSO star style, like how difficult is it to play something like World Big Basic? And do you even really need to know the rules to be a player? And my answer to that is you don't. Because many, many people that I have brought into playing Dungeons and Dragons, I usually start off with some kind of a retro clone or ba World Big Basic. Although now I'll be doing some more chainmail because that's, that's my current thing. But, um, and I don't tell them how to play. I give them the character sheet. I quickly go over it very quickly because, of course, they're going to have questions, right? I'll say, here's your gear. You have a bow with 20 arrows. You know, every time you shoot one, check it off. Uh, you've got a sword. If you want to attack somebody, you have some oil. That's good for, you know, various things, lighting fires or filling up your lantern. Um, you know, you, you can see here your strength is 12. You know, average is 9 to 12. So you're kind of on the high end of average. 18 would be the most. 3 would be the lowest. And that's it. Like, I don't get into all the details. Well, how do I play, they say. Tell me what you want your character to do. That's how you play D&D in its most basic form. We don't need to remove the rules in order to play like that. If we are DMs that understand the rules, you could give somebody a character sheet from any game that you are confident in, including 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons, and you could just give them this sheet with all the skills and powers and all the stuff that might be on there that you're thinking, and you don't need to explain to them how to use all of it for them to enjoy it. Now, if they become more avid gamers and they want to know that stuff, obviously they're going to want to do power, power builds and all kinds of other cool stuff you can do. But just starting out, it's enough to know you have a sword. And then when they say, hey, and I say, what do you want to do? And they say, well, this is a monster, right? I'm going to attack it with my sword. Then I can say, okay, roll a 20-sided die. We're talking 5e here. Roll a 20-sided die. Add your bonus there for the dexterity that's on your sheet. This is your initiative count. You're going to go when that number comes up. Okay, it's their turn. Okay, well, I want to attack him with my sword. Okay, good. Roll 20 side die, add the number next to the sword there. That's what you're going to add to it. You're trying to beat this number. Right? That's it, right? Now you're going to say, because I hear this a lot, never give a new player a spellcaster. This might be more and more relevant in the more complex games, possibly. But honestly, if you take a game like, hold on, it is not a Banners Keep video if I do not at one point go to the, the Mulvey Basic book. All right, so here we are. Right, I pressure you on the right page. Um, all right, so here we are. We've got the spells, right? Okay, so I give somebody a magic user. Here we go. Charm person. What does that do? Detect magic. What does that do? Floating disc. Okay, that might need a little description. Hold portal. What does that do? Light. What does a light spell do? Ask a random person who has any idea of any kind of fantasy because they're playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? What does a light spell do? They know what it does, right? Protection from evil. It makes it so that evil things have a hard time hitting you, or perhaps they can't hit you at all. Read languages allows you to read languages, right? Most of the spells in D&D have very simple names, and the person doesn't need to know all the mechanics behind it to understand what their spell does. Now, 
if they say, you know, if they say, okay, well, I want to cast a sleep spell and they're going to knock the whole party out because of how they're doing it. Sure. As a DM, you're going to want to say to them, listen, the sleep spell, you know, you got to make sure that it's going to get everybody in the range. So you're going to want to like back up or do whatever. And you just tell them when they're, going to, when they're going to do it or just let them do it the way they want the first time. And then say to them, listen, because you didn't really know, I let you get away with it. But in the future, if your party members are mixed in, they are also going to be subject to the sleep spell. Easy as that, right? Uh, I want to look for a secret door. I want to check under the bed. I want to climb this wall. I want to do whatever. Okay, I'll just tell them what die I roll. Do I need really basic mechanics for that? Now, what I will say is this. If I'm working playing with new people, I will often make them a pre-gen. I think that, that helps a lot. And what I try to do is give them a variety of different equipment, which I'm going to talk about in a second, on their sheet to really spark their imagination. I give them a coil of rope. I give them some spikes. I give them a vial of holy water or possibly some acid. I give them you know, a holy symbol, or I give them a bag of marbles, or I give them a loaf of bread, right? I mean, I give them all kinds of interesting stuff so that they will, and I know this is like the bane of all things, right? Oh, character should, players shouldn't be looking at their character sheets. What well, for their inventory they do? I mean, if you were on an adventure and you had a backpack full of crap, you'd be thinking about what you have, right? <laughs> so I don't have a problem with that. Um, so when I look at it that way, I say, give them a pre-gen, Give them some basic equipment, some that seems that's very obvious that could be useful, like a grappling hook and a rope, and some that who knows if it'd be useful or not, you know, a, a ball of uh, twine or some cotton, you know, let them figure out what could, could be used for. The favorite part for me as being a DM is when somebody looks at their sheet and they see something weird like, hey, I have some beeswax and, uh, you know, the, that you were saying that it's really loud in that cave and it was disorientating. Can I put the wax in my ears so that... Uh, that I can walk through there without having a problem? Yes, you can. And that is d and I found that some of the best players are the ones who have never played before. They just do the thing that's logical. They don't think about the rules. It's not that the rules are complicated. It's just that they don't think about them, right? And that's how we should be playing no matter what level we are at. We are inside our characters. We are thinking about what they can do. So, huh. What do a lot of these simple simple games do that seem to make them easier in people's minds? I'm going to actually put a challenge up to these things. Many of them do things like slot-based uh, gear, meaning that like you have five pieces of gear, you don't need to tell me what it is. When the time comes, you'll just say, I have this. That does the opposite of what it should do. What should be happening is the players are trying to be creative. They've got something to choose from. If you take a player who's never played before and then you tell them, well, you could have whatever piece of gear you want, they're not going to know what kind of gear is useful in D&D. What player who's never played before would ever ask for a 10-foot pole? Nobody. But we know when we're regular players that a 10-foot pole is like the most useful thing you can possibly have, right? Giving them these empty slots so they can just put whatever they want in, that doesn't work for me. I already talked about explaining too much with spells. Hit points, you don't need to explain that either until it comes down time to it, right? So uh, these games that have these like weird hit point things, like, give give extra hit points to people, you don't need to do that. Um, roll under ability scores, again, not a fan of that. It makes people, as soon as you tell somebody the way we play the games, you look and you try to roll under your ability scores, the first thing they're going to do is look at that ability score every single time before they decide what their character will do. To me, that's just, hmm. Now, the, the the other thing, too, is that, so I mentioned the arrows, right? People are so afraid that, like, new players won't be able to count their arrows or keep track of their rations. Why not, right? I mean, these people have money in their wallet, right, that they walk around with, or they, they go to the refrigerator and take food out, and they realize when they need more milk, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, 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 to keep track of stuff on the sheet, and that gives new players something to do. It gives them something to engage with. So I do keep track of, you know, how much uh, coinage they're carrying, how many arrows they have. How much, if they use a rope, do they leave it behind, right? What exactly equipment are they carrying? If they have to be cognizant of that equipment, they will think about it. If they can just automatically pull out of their, their pocket whatever piece of equipment they want, they will not be as creative with it. Now, sure, there's going to be times where they might have had a creative idea that they could have done if they had that piece of gear. But in most cases, new again, new players are not going to be like that. They're going to think about what they've got, especially if you give them the right gear. You get a, a party of like four uh for PCs that are all new, you make sure you scatter it around. One person has, you know, the tinder box and the, the the oil and the lantern stuff. Another person has some some you know extra wine or whatever or vinegar maybe. Vinegar is interesting, right? Maybe somebody has uh you know 
flash powder or you know random things you can just give to people all over bread like i said uh, these things can all be really really useful so in short do i think that we're oversimplifying games yeah i do i, I honestly think that and i mean I, i'm playing basic right that is to be that is to say like i wouldn't necessarily take a brand brand new player who's never played an rpg before and play them by the book rules as written first edition dungeons and dragons already somebody's writing in the comments you can't play rules as written because they contradict each other okay I wouldn't give them like Cylonics, right? <laughs> That's just not something I would do immediately, right? But but I think that like most OSR type games, as they stand, the original games are simple enough that anybody can pick them up if you just have faith in your friends that you're inviting to the game that they'll be able to figure it out. Let them know they don't need to know all the rules. How do I play this game? You tell me what you want your character to do, and we'll adjudicate it with dice. That's how you play. You don't need to spend an hour explaining the game to them. You don't need to explain what every spell does. You don't need to tell them the range of their missile weapons. You don't need to tell them how much damage a sword does. Hit points, damage, all that stuff is meaningless to a new player. What they want to do is have an adventure and uh, be a character, right? So my thought there is keep making your games. I don't want to make it sound like people shouldn't make their, as we call them, fantasy heartbreakers. I mean, in fact, I'm doing my chainmail hack, right? So I'm already doing this. But what I do think is that if you're going to do that stuff, try to create something that's and you're going to put it out there for people to play beside yourself try to think of a reason that you're making this thing besides you just like these handful of mechanics because honestly if you just want to play white box D with three extra mechanics added then just make a blog post about it you don't need to write a whole game system all right hopefully i didn't have negatives i didn't mean it that way i love simple games i have a pile of pdfs of them i think they're really interesting but i do think a lot of people err towards the side of creating things for mechanics and not creating them for story. And I think if you're creating a new game that that isn't innovative, I'm talking about a game that has mechanics from a bunch of other OSR type games, just jamming things together. To me, there's no real reason to do that unless you create a world around it and create those worlds. That's what I'd love to see. So let me know if you guys know of any particular games that have cool worlds and stuff around them besides games that are mostly just stuff thrown together. I'd love to see them in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have made a game. I'll check it out. Even if it's one that I kind of semi bash there let me know because i love to look at new games if you haven't already subscribe and uh ring the bell to get notifications and i'll see you next time